Ladies and gentlemen, we have a major problem. Some would say it's a major dysfunction in the country today. We have too much dependent upon the federal government for resourcing everything we need from food, shelter, clothing, insurance, cell phones, border security. Folks, they are inadequate. They've always been inadequate because they're operating outside their purpose. The purpose of the government is really to do for the people that it serves, keyword service, what they cannot do for themselves. As evidenced by this famous quote from one of our heroes of this constitutional republic, Abraham Lincoln, and I quote, the legitimate object of government is to do for a community of people whatever they need to have done but cannot do at all or cannot so well do for themselves in their separate and individual capacities. In all that the people can individually do as well as for themselves, government ought not to interfere. Today, we live in a world where government is interfering in everything we do. Lest we forget the word mandate or lest we forget the idea for the good of all. Folks, we need to come back to the idea of self-government and not neglect the benefits of government, but not give them benefits that they do not have. The greatest freedom we can have is to operate in that self-government. Let us therefore go forward with working towards that end to be free, as free is indeed the truth that we should seek. Welcome to our show, Furthermore, where you're going to find education, motivation, and inspiration. I'm Dr. Mark. And I'm Dr. Michelle, and we are here to push you and encourage you to go a little further in all aspects of your life, to do more and become more than you ever thought possible. Education is the key and information is king, but wisdom will always remain the same. So stay tuned for the latest news and hottest headlines. Truth bombs, amazing guests, impactful information, and life-changing plans. You are being prepared for the best days of your life. But you know what to do. Put on those seat belts and buckle those things and put those tray tables in the upright position and prepare yourself for the greatest journey of your life. Right here, right now, on, on Furthermore. Furthermore. Welcome to our show, y'all. We appreciate you being with us so much. And as always, we are here to push you and encourage you to go a little bit further in all aspects of your life. We like to call ourselves Hope Dealers, where we give you inspirational ideas, provide hope in your heart, help you take better care of your health, and remind you that you've actually got to stand up and preserve your freedoms. Some of the best ways you can preserve your freedoms is you can begin to understand the dynamic that exists. A lot of people see Dr. Michelle and I um, standing up for certain things, but I will tell you, and she would echo this, is we're gonna spend this whole time during our show today talking about how power couples can become powerful. What are some secrets and what are some things that we do that are really not secrets at all that work well? I would not be who I am if it wasn't for my wife, and I'm sure she wouldn't be what she was if it wasn't for me. We are truly people that complete each other. With that said, there is keys to success that we'll spend time talking about. Then there are truly four that we'll talk about after the break in just a few moments, we'll get into them deeper. But when I look at our lives, you know, like this, um, the success we've had just on a very, you know, 30,000 foot view, how would you characterize it, sweetheart? And, and what would you say are some, you know, just characteristics of that? Well, one of the main characteristics is that I always aim to treat the most precious gift that I have been given with love and honor. Oh, she does. I'm telling you, she treats me incredible. And, you know, we think about the times we have together. The thing I think is, is good that people should understand is in order to become powerful, you have to work through painful situations together. You know, in pain, sickness and in health. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's like life is not easy, man. I mean, we spent 
previous shows talking about in this world, you're going to have troubles, but take heart. I have overcome the world. That's Jesus words, not mine. You're going to have troubles, but with the life's troubles you have, it's nice to have someone to go with you on these journeys, you know, um, side by side. And my wife does that for me and I do that for her. So uh, one of the characteristics that we have that I think is very important is we're able to work through difficulties, not between us per se. I mean, that's part of life, but really difficulties we have in life that we face together. I mean, life's hard enough going through it by yourself, but when you get a chance to go with it with somebody else, it does make things a little bit easier, doesn't it? It absolutely does. And we've spent time trying to understand each other's love languages. Mm -hmm. And if you have not read the book, The Five Love Languages, it's really good to take the time to really understand how your partner thinks in the languages of love. And believe it or not, they're different for every person. Yeah. Por ejemplo, si habla español y su esposa no habla español, nadie más entiende más. <laughs> if, if you speak Spanish and your, your partner does it, nobody understands much of anything. And that's kind of what that is. So the idea of this love language idea is, you know, understanding how to communicate is key. And a lot of times we don't think about that. We want our voice to be heard, but we might be communicating in a way that the other person can't hear. Just in a minute, we're going to come back. We're going to give you some specific characteristics. So if you're out there as a couple, soon to be couple, want to be a couple one day, you stay right with us because when we come back after our famous beast mode row, commercial, and we'll be right back with these wonderful characteristics of power couples that you want to copy. We'll be right back. What do you think about? Oh boy, beast mode. I'm thinking that big tiger that just absolutely is so powerful, is so tough, it absolutely blows your mind. But beast mode, the way we're talking about, is a little bit different, isn't it? Because it's ability to do things that go beyond what everybody else can do. We cannot continue as we are. The trajectory of our nation is going in the wrong direction. It is not saved by the government. It's saved because the people are the government. They stand up and do the right things, regardless of the cost. I think of our founding fathers, the 56 people that signed the Declaration of Independence. 56, not 5,600. They had to have some courage and guts to put their lives on the line for the right things. Do we have that, folks? Do you have that? How many have that kind of courage? And we're back with these power couple tips. So we kind of open the door for a good discussion. And we're going to get right down to the nitty gritty right now and give you four key characteristics to enhance your life and make your coupleship a power coupleship. Let's get right into it. Well, the first thing is really quality time. We actually make it a point to have a date night and our date night is every Friday night. We sit down, we take time for each other and we ensure that we check in. We don't take things for granted. You know, t spending time together is a way to show appreciation and affection and it increases connection and the intimacy in our relationship. You know, sometimes on those date nights, Friday nights, we've had a boy a tough week man it's been hard and so you know it's time for us to kind of unwind and relax and be able to just stop a moment sometimes i feel like at the end of the week it's almost like ptsd but i'm glad i can <laughs> go through it with you right yeah the next one is godly surrender and this is an interesting um uh statement when we're talking about marriage or being a power couple uh, surrender actually means that we're going to give up some sort of our thoughts or our ideas or, or our, our um, processes to be in line with another with another person. It doesn't mean that you that you're inferior. It just means maybe there's a little bit of compromise. Now, godly surrender is is not really doing it your way. It's doing it God's way. We got to focus on wellness and and healthy boundaries. Talk about those in a minute. Well, we absolutely take time to get rest. 
we eat a balanced nutritional protocol. We are very careful with what we put at the end of our fork. We try to take a little time to walk in the sun, to get some sunlight, deal with stress appropriately so stress doesn't deal us. And one of our favorite things to do is to exercise a little bit every single day. And we know we have to get be careful about toxic exposure, smoking, mm. drinking, drugging, staying away from things that would increase the total toxic burden on this skin bag that we live in. And we certainly enjoy doing new things on places that are new. Like Yeah, and, and that number four one, you know, so far we took quality time, godly surrender, and then these focusing on wellness. But this last one, this idea of healthy boundaries is one that we really need to flesh out more because People, things, situation, life, jobs, mm -hmm. kids. People, things, situation, life, jobs, kids. People, things, situation, life, jobs, kids. They can all encroach mm -hmm. upon the primary relationship. The proper order of authority, you've heard us talk about this before, is God, man, society, and government. When we go God first, man, it's man and woman. If you're a couple, you become one. So healthy boundaries means that none of those other things below can intrude upon that relationship, meaning society can't and government can't. And frankly, kids can't. And so a lot of times these healthy boundaries will be encroached upon because we think we have a duty to all these other things. And that would be wrong, correct? Well, we want to set healthy boundaries around those things. Certainly, if a child is sick, you're going to have to take the time to take care. That's why when we talked about quality time, it's important to set time aside mm -hmm. for your primary relationship in order to nurture it and continue to grow. And when you set healthy boundaries, it's also good to say, hey, you can take out the trash. I'll do the dishes. You can cook the meal. I'll do the laundry. So setting healthy boundaries doesn't mean that you have to take something on completely yeah. on your own. It's being a couple. It's dividing the duties. It's creating health in all aspects of your life. Healthy boundaries defines priorities. When you define priorities, you actually can see the priorities lived out. When you spend time on those priorities, you know, you'll begin to see those things you spend time upon um, grow and begin to flourish. We have that date night on Friday night, as Dr. Michelle talked about. Nobody intrudes. There's been a lot of times we've been out, you know, different places and, and, you know, we, we're going to do it whether we're on the road or not. And somebody say, well, you want to go join us for dinner? Well, we might politely say no, because it's date night. It happened recently. And Someone said, will you come to the party? And we're like, no, it's date night. And they looked at me like I was strange. You know, remember that? I, was I like, do. Well, I didn't yeah. care. It was we date night. We already had plans. Yeah, it's like, what are you doing? It's date night. Who's coming? No one. Not you. <laughs> it's her. You know, she's the only one. And so, you know, you're not invited. I don't know how to tell you that, you know. And we've got to guard those boundaries. It's not being rude. It's being definite. If we're definite in those boundaries, we won't lose the intimacy and the closeness of that marriage. Again, life is tough enough as it is, folks. If you have someone to go through life with, it makes it a whole lot easier. And so healthy boundaries might mean that you have to love some people from a greater distance. I mean, they can't get into your space, man. And that's a hard thing to get in, in family situations. It oftentimes can be setting those healthy boundaries, but healthy boundaries are good. And mm -hmm. that... Uh, lets individuals kind of know where you stand, if you will. When you do these things right, spend quality time, you have a, an attitude of godly surrender. When you begin to focus on wellness for your benefit of your partner and God, and you have the healthy boundaries, they work. As evidenced by people that have lived these things out and have really had some good experience. And so we pull together kind of this compilation of these people that have had good success and the reason they had a good set, some of these little things you'll see weaved in there. Just listen to a few of these short testimonials. We've been married for 51 years. 54 years. We're celebrating our 25th wedding anniversary this year. Friday the 13th turned out to be the luckiest day of my life. I think what I love the most about Bruce is he's very kind. She's a good cook. Serene. 
that person. She's a very compassionate person. She is truly the person I always wanted to be. I love <laughs> She is. She is the epitome of serenity. Oh, one surprise to me about marriage after all these years has been what a joy it is at this stage. I didn't know that it would be that wonderful again as it was, you know, before we had all these little screaming memes. Well, it's not easy. Well, and the biggest And if problem, anybody thinks that you're going to be on your honeymoon for 51 years, it's ridiculous. Sometime the tunnel's pretty long. Yeah, and dark. Well, it has been an enjoyable challenge <laughs> uh, because I've been introduced into a culture that I was just totally ignorant of. It was very hard for I know yeah. that. What but hurt I, so much? You. <laughs> I think I had to have been like in my 30s or early 40s. I just thought, this is it? This isn't, this isn't fun. It didn't matter to me that Jim wasn't a member of the church because I loved him very much. And I thought if I only live with him for this time only, then that was what I would be happy with. But a couple of years later when our children started to come along, I realized that was not true. That I wanted to be with my children and him forever. Really, the only reason it worked uh, in those early years is we both loved the Lord and we taught our children to love the Lord. The secret to anything, I think, holding to the rod. If you hold to the rod and don't give up when things are hard, you, there's always a way through. President Hinckley always said it, that, that this will pass and that things will get better. And things always do get better. So you have to be patient and loving and see where it goes. Yeah. You're going to have ups and downs, and but it's worth it. You cannot change someone to fit the mold you want them to be. I just respect his space and he respect my space. Love, love him the way he is. Be sure to buy two tubes of toothpaste. Uh. Well, I will say you are the love of my life. And I'm so grateful that we have stuck it out this long and I see us together another gazillion or Google. Do you say Google now? She's my babe. And I love you. And I love the fact that I'm going to have you by my side forever. I love him so much. I love being with him. How could you not kiss? Yeah. <laughs>
in Genesis, it's not good for man to be alone. So that meant that coupleship is a good thing. So we went back to a scripture that is found in the book of the Bible called Ecclesiastes that is said to be written under God's guidance from the wisest men in the world. And that would be Solomon. Did you know that we can also have this kind of wisdom if we ask for it? The Bible does say that too. So we ask for wisdom every day on how to deal with our relationship. But I want us to go back to this word of, in these four verses in Ecclesiastes. It's going to be chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. If they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. I want to think about this from the reverse. I want to go with a threefold cord first. What does that mean? It is Mark, Michelle, and God. <laughs> you know, God is the three the three stranded cord that brings it together. And it's interestingly enough that the, the three stranded, you know, structure, the three pole structure is indeed the strongest structure known to mankind, not two poles, but three people come together like this. And if God's not involved, that might be pretty strong, but it's not the strongest. So the point being is that that three structure, that three strand structure is good, making two under God's design far, far better than one because God holds it together. It's nice to have someone pick you up and you fall down, huh? Well, absolutely. And it's nice to be there to have a shoulder to lean on. Oh. It's nice to be there when uh, it's cold, you know? And all of these things can be wrapped up in a little short video. Check this out. So I'm an introvert. Give me a cup of coffee and a good book, put me in a coffee shop all alone and I'm happy. And so you can imagine that when difficult times come, when life just gets really sucky, my natural instinct is to keep it to myself, to not share it with anybody, to kind of stuff it and just pretend like everything's okay. And so when someone asks, hey, Seth, how are you doing? Oh, I'm good. And I don't think this is just an introvert extrovert thing. I actually think this is a human thing. Like I think when we go through hard times, our natural instinct as human beings is just to keep it to ourselves, to isolate, to keep quiet, to stuff it, to pretend like everything is fine. I actually think it's this inclination towards isolation that caused Solomon to write this in the book of Ecclesiastes. Solomon says this in Ecclesiastes chapter four, verse nine. He says, two people are better off than one for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. And so I've come to learn, even as an introvert, even as somebody who doesn't necessarily like to reach out for help, that I need other people. When I'm going through difficult times, when life just gets hard, I need people to walk alongside me, to encourage me, to challenge me, and you need the same. And so my question to you is, who is that for you? Who are the people that are going to challenge you and encourage you when life just gets difficult? If you don't have those people, I encourage you find some people this week because you can't do life alone. We need others. I hope you caught that. The idea of two being better than one, we've hammered that point home. We've shown you and told you how to become a power couple. If you're married out there, you could become better, put this stuff into practice and really understand that to make it work, keep your circle of people being very tight. Your wife is number one, and you probably want to have about this many people know more than that outside. Not everybody needs to know your business. That's another little free tip for you right there. So just FYI with that. You know, a lot of times we get asked, you know, what's our strength? And I think it's really relying on God's word. And we kind of run our practice like that, the Functional Medical Institute. We, we run it with these same principles, which gives us a unique insight to really our definition of functional medicine, which we're going to talk about next time. You don't want to miss that because a lot of people ask us what that is. That's, that's true. And at the Functional Medical Institute, we have a very unique way in which we practice. We would not want you to miss our next episode as we help you understand the concepts of what functional medicine is all about. 
It's not what you think. It's not just about running some cool tests and giving supplements, supplements. as opposed to medications. No, no. This is going upstream as far as you can go. Um, I like functional healing more often. And that's exactly what we do. Oftentimes, people come in because they have an ache, a pain, or a complaint. Mm -hmm. And we actually find that what's at the root is something spiritual or mm -hmm. something emotional. They're actually chewing on something internally and it's making them sick. So we get to the root of the problem, help eradicate that issue, and people heal. They Physically, do. emotionally, intellectually, and spiritually. And that is the keys to functional medicine slash functional healing, which we're gonna define for you next week, right here on Furthermore. We can't wait to see you. Bye for now. Stay tuned. This is not something that is a Mark idea and a Michelle idea. This is a God idea. This thing right here has a two year shelf life. When we think about the problems we have in America with our food supply, what are we gonna eat, what are we gonna do? Stock up on something that's gonna help you. This is organic pea protein, greens and reds, fibers, and multivitamins and minerals. It will stay good for two years. How many have wondered what you're gonna eat if things go south? Kingdom fuel right here.